I'm struck really every time that I that I step on a plane and, and work travel overseas to work with my collaborators, how I need to be very aware of my leadership style and skills to be effective um, in that situation. I think it's very interesting because being an effective leader um, in a cross-cultural setting where there may be um, a very important historical context, a historical context of colonialism, et cetera, is really important to consider how you approach your and work with your colleagues and build the partnership. I think that that's certainly something that I'm thinking of all the time when I'm, when I'm working overseas. And I think it's not about being the most assertive, aggressive, outspoken. It's not about domineering the conversation and, and being clear that I have all the right ideas and all, all the, you know, the answers for how to do things. It's actually really about being an imp a, a good listener, a really good listener to build that partnership. Global health work is really built on trust and good interpersonal skills and relationships. And that's why I think leadership is so important to global health because we need people who are really willing to think in creative and innovative ways because the problems that the world's facing today in, in healthcare are complex. And I say that the, therefore we know that the solutions need to be equally complex and multifactorial and multidisciplinary. And so if we're willing to create leaders, they're the ones that are gonna help, help really think of those creative solutions that we need to, to re respond to the um, global health problems that we have today. really at the heart of all the work we do is capacity building. And we're really there to support and buoy our Tanzanian colleagues and help transfer skills so that they can really take on growing um, roles in, and um, really become leaders themselves. I mean, I think that's what we should be doing. We, don't ha we haven't cornered the market on leadership. And I think that when we're working in a global setting, and in this case with our um, colleagues in Tanzania, why shouldn't we be supporting them in a way that they can develop their own leadership skills and styles? And so we are working with clinicians providing care at our pediatric HIV care and treatment clinic, um, trying to build the staff from the um, nurses to the physicians, to the data entry staff, to the receptionists, to the pharmacists, and really trying to find opportunities to help them build and grow. And I think that's something that a good leader does, try, recognizes the important role that everybody plays in the system and tries to help them grow to the best of their potential. One way that I feel I've been able to really grow my leadership skills is by watching other really effective leaders in, in action. And I've had the chance to do that at Dartmouth Medical School. Um, I'm an alum of Dartmouth Medical School, a proud member of the class of 1990 and had a chance to actually learn a lot from the faculty who are in various leadership roles, experts in their field. I think paying attention to their, how they um, function as effective leaders has been very impor important to me, was very important to me as a student and important to me as I came back and became a faculty member. Having access to terrific leaders and terrific teachers and terrific mentors, um, I think is really one, one key aspect of, of um, the education um, here at Dartmouth Medical School. And I think that that, that really s sets us apart and distinguishes us in, in a really important way.